I have grown my business as I live. And I don't know if that makes that much sense, but essentially everything I do, I do with instinct and with intention. And I'm very confident after years of experience in Italian craftsmanship and luxury that what I am designing and creating is something that the world needs. And I think that are extremely confident about what it is you're actually setting out to do. And you have tested the waters. You have not only just created prototypes, but actually been able to sell them and hear great responses from clients and friends and family. At one point, you just have to jump in and dive in head first. Welcome to 99 Humans. My name is Jeff LaCosta, curious coach and Wall Street Journal bestselling author, striving to understand how little things generate big impact. And I'm Nadia Carta, tech executive and lifestyle coach with a mission to transform lives and corporations by kindling hearts to generate a zeal for life. Each week, we investigate stories about the human side of leadership to re-energize your spirit and help you become a stronger leader. Because the reality is that leadership is messy, goofy, challenging, but always human. Thanks for spending time with us today. Let's dive in. We are talking to leaders about what it's really like to be a leader, trying to get beyond the philosophies and the leadership books, just to understand individual stories of people working with people, which is usually messy and funny and imperfect and hard instead of, oh yeah, I did a big, you know, thing and here's what came out and I'm very successful. And there's almost this facade, I think, over leaders and someone such as yourself with so much success, I think has quite a facade as well. So we're hoping we can get behind that a little bit, get beneath the surface and Here's some stories about what it's been like for you to build your business and to lead the company to so much success that you have. I'm obsessed with you. So I read all of your articles when you posted about like your bag with Serena Williams. I was like, whoa. (laughs) Well, that's really funny. Serena, I guess I can say this. I just got a message from her on Instagram right before I was trying to get on. So I may be a little, oh my gosh, I'm, I, that just threw up. If you have to talk to Serena, that's allowed. I think you could dump <laughs> us and go talk to her. <laughs> I looked at my, I looked at my cell phone and I guess this morning is a perfect example of, of leading and how things are messy, but I looked at my cell phone and I went to messages and it said, Hey, and I'm like, who said, Hey, and then I, Serena, did you? <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Hi. My goodness. Maybe we start with that. <laughs> I looked over all of the notes and just what you guys are doing, which I think is amazing because, yes, I think that everyone needs to feel like they look like they're the perfect leader or what is the epitome of being a successful woman or man entrepreneur and you look to see what the great people have people who are extremely successful that have paved the way whether they're modern day or just successful Americans and your worldly people in general you don't always know I think that in this day and age, I think it, it is as important to lead by example and really show what it takes. That's not an easy statement to make. What does it really mean to lead by example and also show the dirtier side of things? It's hard out there. It is not mm. easy being an entrepreneur. It Success is certainly does not come. And then like, how does one define success these days? Because we all have our individual goals. You're defining success right now for you. I would like to say this right before the pandemic, my brand was really launching hard in major cities across the world. And then of course we weren't going out, we weren't doing anything. And I had to take a hard look at what the brand looked like and what it looked like for me as well as where I wanted it to go while the world really was in lockdown, whether that was in Italy, my husband was in Italy at the time, I was in the US, I had left New York for Newport because there was clean air and the kids could go outside. And I thought 
in that particular moment, success was truly getting up every day and making it through the day and creating brand awareness for the brand. It was something as simple as that because anyone could have folded and that would have been fine too. I mean, it was hard. It was a hard... Now, I think that my success or what I believe is successful for me is creating something that I'm proud of and that I stand for and then really sticking to what my integrity is about my business, as well as not selling myself short, but creating more more and more opportunities on a daily basis. And that's something that's not easy. Success for me has actually never been about the dollar sign or the euro sign, or it's not about money. It is first about passion. And really, I believe that I have been successful because I've shown the world how passionate I am about what I do and everything else really will follow. It's I'm writing notes because what you just said is amazing, especially about integrity and woman to woman, the legacy that we create for our daughters and children as well. That's special. We got your reference, Kimberly, from Filippo. Yes. When we asked Filippo, who would be great leaders that we can talk to? He said, oh my God, Kimberly. So <laughs> your brand, I have to say, is already very strong. And I'm wondering, as you are creating this major success, which are the events that you stumbled across that really disturb your equanimity? Because I'm looking at you now and I'm like, Kimberly is so peaceful. She's so zen. I cannot even imagine you having a tough time. So yeah. <laughs> tell us about when that happens. As the brand grows, as we grow as entrepreneurs and leaders, there are going to be moments that we don't know everything for sure. And I think that realizing that and admitting that from the get-go and really listening to others that we can learn from and that can make us more learned and successful is really the way to go. I try to stay as calm as I can on a daily basis. I also as a woman and mother, daughter, wife, I handle a lot. At times people will say, wow, we have no idea. I had this conversation earlier today. We have no idea how you're doing it. You wouldn't even know. And for one example, I care for my mother who is ill and I'm growing a global brand. And I don't just care for her. Like she's in my home. She lives with me. I manage medicine and nursing. And that is something that teaches us a lot of patience and how to focus really on one thing at a time. I know that we can all get super, super overwhelmed. My assistant earlier this fall had said to me, I really need to move you away from your lined padded paper. We really need to create a multiple calendars for you. In fact, she's messaging me right now. She doesn't want me to text her anymore. I'm supposed to message her on this app where we can, it's something that most human beings probably use on a daily basis. And she said, because every, a lot of what you do is in your, whether it's an agenda or meetings, or creativity, design, deliveries, everything, collaborations, we need to put us on a group chat. So I said, Oh, great. Okay, you do that. And she did. And then it really did take me like I know where to go on my phone now, because I work constantly from my phone. It's like my number one. It's that that's it. I have, I actually own five computers. And I don't open them as often as I open my phone and I may not be the only one in the world, but I think that the ability, going back to your original question, to really take a look at one problem, if it is a problem, and solve that one thing at a time, because I think we get overwhelmed and feel like we need to do it. And I do have great aspirations for my business, but at times, especially when we have, we have to figure out how to make something work. And it could be a situation that makes us a little flustered. We just have to breathe in 
And I don't know how zen I am all the time, but, and you know, roll up your sleeves and it, whatever it takes, I think is a motto I live and work by. Whatever it takes in anything I do to get it done is literally what I do. For example, I was in Florida last week and I'm very proud of the fact that Kimberly Pucci, the brand, has created an amazing series of collaborations. One that I'm most proud of is with an Italian super yacht company called Pershing. Pershing is a super yacht company from Ancona, which is on the eastern seaboard of Italy, you may know. And it is the fastest boat, currently the fastest or one of the fastest boats on the planet. It's like the Ferrari for the water. Cool. It's very cool. Yeah. Kimberly, if you can get us on it, we will fly to Florida with you. I was on quite a few the other day. Nice. Interesting thing is that I set a goal during the pandemic in amongst many other things of survival and also creating collaborations with some of the largest luxury, like-minded luxury companies in the world. And yachting was on the forefront as I had branched out during the pandemic and I had created a home line for my atelier. So we went from how are we wearing beautiful luxury goods to how are we living with luxury goods. And I thought that it would be really amazing to collaborate one with Italian brands, European brands. Everything I do is designed in the US, completely handmade in Tuscany. So I needed to align myself with other like-minded brands who did not know that they needed me as much as they really do. And so I presented myself to them and initially like a little bit of a chase and I would get invited to particular events. And then I finally really sat down and I said, I'm going to be in your area next week and I have an entire presentation for you. And they said, what do you have? I said, well, I created a collection for Pershing. And they said, really? And I said, I've studied your colorways. I've been to all of your parties. I've been on every one of your yachts and I see what you need. And so the brand manager at the time, who is now a very good friend, said, show me a couple pictures. And I showed him a photo shoot because not only did I create branded product for them, I also shot it so they could envision what the lifestyle looked like before they even said yes to the meeting. And he just looked at me. He said, wow, okay, let's meet. And I walked in. It took a little bit. I got the okay to dress Pershing for the first boat show in Fort Lauderdale, which is a really big deal. It's a big, big market. And when they said to me, what does this look like financially? I said, oh, I didn't know we were talking about money yet. Oh, wow. And they said, I said, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do your first boat show free of charge. (gasps) That was bold. He said, you have four super yachts. And of course, this was, Nadia, the 1st of September, and we know Italy still does not open until, really until about the 10th, but I was prepared. I knew they were going to say yes. And I said, no problem. And I organized, I just knew in my head what I had to do. And three days before the show, the manager called me back and he said, listen, this is really crazy. The boats just arrived from Italy. This is now the first boat show pandemic and my first major collaboration and my only chance. I do this and I do it right. I have a good chance of being successful with them and I make a mistake and that's it. He said, we don't have any linens for any of the cabins. Wow. And I had discussed with him how I felt like a Pershing yacht is like a penthouse in Miami or New York. And when you buy that, At times, you just want it to look turnkey. You walk on. You don't want to have to worry about it. It all needs to be on brand. And so he said, would you do the linens? And I said, yes. Because you didn't really have enough going on yet. Just pile it on and you'll figure it out. And I think that when you, confidence is everything. You don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. But if you are prepared, preparation is key. And that will follow into where you wanted to start, Nadia, which is with Serena. And last summer, I had said yes to sponsoring a Pucci lounge at a very well-known event in the Hamptons. 
it was an event for the 1640 Society, and they are a society of billionaire family funds, people from all over the world. It was absolutely new to me to sponsor something that was not sports related or yachting related, car related. This was just a series of parties. And mm. people could have not looked at my product. You just don't know. I thought there's got to be someone that is going to attend it that could possibly need my brand for their business. It was a big ask. It was four nights in the Hamptons in August. It's a big commitment, moving product from Newport, making sure everything was perfect, and then moving to, I actually worked with three out of four locations, so all private homes in Southampton and Sag Harbor. And regardless, we come to the second day and it's raining out and all of these billionaires had to sit under a wet tent because they were organized. That's where they had organized. They had to stand in line to get their lunch under another wet tent. And when I arrived at 7.30 in the morning with a beautiful silk dress because I'm prepared, I said, it's wet out here. Why don't you go in the back by the pool house and you'll stay dry all day? And I said, but I wouldn't be in front of the tent where everyone is. And I sponsored this event, so I'm willing to get a little wet. Hmm. And so I set up literally right next to the to the large presentation tent. There were speakers all day long. And I was so concerned with making sure that my product didn't get wet and that I was still able to network that I failed to look at the list of speakers until the photographer came up to me. The sun came out at one point. He said, Kimberly, this is beautiful. I want to get a picture of you in your tent. And I said, great, let's do it. And he said, were you at the party last night? And I said, oh, I was at the party. He said, oh, were you at the party with Serena? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, it was a dinner. I said, no, I had dinner at my hotel. So maybe I didn't get invited. He said, there were two parties last night. Serena Williams was at one. And I was at a beautiful party at a beautiful home, but it was there were a lot of people. I said, oh my gosh. He said, did you look at the list of speakers? I said, no. He said, well, she's the last speaker for today. And I had just, my nephew, Lorenzo, who's from Florence, is an avid tennis player. My kids play basketball. They play a little tennis. But I had just created my first tennis racket bag. And I brought it to the event. Wow, perfect. And so the very small tent is outfitted with as much as I can get in onto two tables without having product destroyed. And all of a sudden, I turn around and I didn't leave the tent all day, primarily because I wanted to meet as many people as possible. And I turned around and Serena and her friend, who is also another a European tennis player, he was actually going to be interviewing her. She did a Q&A session at the end of the event. They, oops, they walked right by me. And I said, this is the opportunity. Wow. Kimberly, your courage and the stories that you've just shared is so abundantly clear. And you called it out yourself as being one of the key things that's helped you get there. I'd love to hear a little bit about the nerves, maybe behind the courage or if there are any nerves. I'm curious, like, what was it like to really reach out to the fastest yacht in the world company and put yourself out there? How did you approach managing the nerves while putting on this courageous sort of face? Let's put it this way. I have grown my business as I live, and I don't know if that makes that much sense, but essentially everything I do, I do with instinct and with intention. And... I'm very confident after years of experience in Italian craftsmanship and luxury that what I am designing and creating is something that the world needs. And I think that we're extremely confident about what it is you're actually setting out to do. And you have tested the waters. You have not only just created prototypes, but actually been able to sell them and hear great responses from clients and friends and family 
at one point you just have to jump in and dive in head first and someone can only say no, right? It's when someone says yes, that is what truly fuels the energy on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like it. Yes, you can. And again, there will be no's, but I've been blessed to have quite a few yeses in the past couple of years, and especially since the pandemic, which has propelled the business and the journey. Can I ask a potential difficult question? Sure. Because so much of what you're saying, like basically you're talking to me, I'm like, like you are articulating, Jeff knows this, but you're articulating what I believe of the success principles. Like, of course it's going to be no, but it's the yes that propels you forward. So I adore what you're saying. Part of me is like, Kimberly, when are you going to write your book? Because I want to read it. You're definitely going to be out there with a book. And the question that I have for you is this, were you born this way? My friends and my family like to say, yeah. What do you like to say? I think that I have, with life's experiences, grown into this. I think I've always had the drive and the ability to do what I'm doing. But I think that you need to acquire experience in life to bring you to a certain point where you can do exactly what I'm doing. And sometimes it's saying yes and figuring it out later. It is absolutely just going for it, truly going for it. And knowing that failure is part of the success. And if everything was so smooth in life, we wouldn't learn from any of our mistakes. So you know how to humanize it in a way where ups and downs a lot. You may find that. I share ups and downs a lot on LinkedIn. Like there are days that are tough. And then there are days where you're trying to figure out how to, it, truly, if, if there were 48 hours in a day, wow, that would be amazing, right? I mean, trying to accomplish it all and still keep your sanity at times and still do everything else we have to do in our personal lives. But I think that knowing how to juggle it all and not in a cr crazy way. I have a lot of people, they'll say, wow, this is just, this is incredible. And I was in Florida last week and I met an entrepreneur who was pretty much enamored with the story. And my assistant walked in and he said to her, I have a question for you. Do you think there's anything that Kimberly can't do? And I looked at her and she said, I really don't. I think that <laughs> when yeah. you open yourself up to all kinds of opportunities and you go for it, you really, the sky's the limit, but you have to set yourself up that way too. And I think it is a mindset. If you set yourself up knowing that you have limitations, you will always have limitations. What are your limitations? Because it seems to no me that you don't have any, Kimberly. <laughs> I cannot believe that you have limitations. I love that. Kimberly, how do you instill this mindset into the people around you? Right. Because you, you said in the beginning that you don't have to do it all yourself. And in this world of no limitations, that is so exciting for you as the founder, the leader, the one, the namesake of this yeah. brand. But obviously when you say something like, oh, we'll deliver in time for that yacht, there's a ton of people, your assistants involved. How do you think about rallying everyone around you to be as aligned and excited about where you're going. First, you have to show them that you can do it and you're not afraid to do it. Perfect example. I had a Pershing client last spring who took delivery of their boat in Florida. And some people would just normally think that this boat's going to stay in Florida. Why wouldn't you enjoy your boat 365 days a year? You're not going to do that in New York or in Newport. This boat was going to Michigan. I thought, Michigan, oh my God. Wow, that's different. That's different. Um, <laughs> and not only was it going four weeks to deliver some things that were really big, the client wanted to take off all of the rugs. So the rugs had to be installed in Florida because with Pershing, for example, which are created by a well-known Italian design house called Poltrona Frau. Everything is high design, but they are bolted down to the, the boat because it goes between 40 and 50 knots. So I said yes, 
And then I knew what I was going to have to do and what I, ha- what I did in order to deliver. And this is crazy. People are like, wow. I flew from Providence to Atlanta in order to deliver to this boat. I drove to a, toward Chattanooga, Tennessee, picked up all the new rugs for the boat, grabbed an espresso or two, and then I drove straight through to Fort Lauderdale so they could be installed on the boat the next morning. Wow. They were installed on a Friday and the boat had to leave because of the hurricane clause and insurance for boats. It had to leave Fort Lauderdale by May 31st. It had to go above South Carolina is kind of the cutoff. And the client was marveled. The team was marveled. The captain couldn't believe it. And my team saw that when I say I am going to do something and you will, I will. I almost want to invite you to one of our Google team meetings, right? Because there are a couple of things you're saying that are making me like wonder. First is concept that it seems that like, you say yes. And, and you said earlier it's about preparation and confidence. And you're like, yeah, I know already what, but yes is your default. Correct. Like, it seems to me that you live life, which is a beautiful mindset. I'll say, you know what? There's time for the no. I'm going to say yes. And eventually, sure, I'm going to bring this rug from Italy for this luxury. I mean, I mean, it seems that the juice is worth the squeeze as well. I mean, I wouldn't think that you would do it for <laughs> anyone. Of course. But I wonder, and this is going to my question, because how much of this mindset do you also bring into your personal life? For example, if your kids are saying, Hey mom, can we fly to, I don't know, Burning Man and rent a $50,000 RV? Can we do that? Like how much so great is typically showing up in, in family life, for I, example? I have, um, when I had children, I wanted to make sure that they were not just U.S. citizens or Italian citizens. My husband is from Florence. My daughter was born in Florence. My son was born in the U.S., but we hold property. They have dual citizenship. I didn't want them to just be Italian children or American children. I wanted them to be citizens of the world. So at a very young age, these children, as early as three months, I mean, they've been traveling across the globe. And I feel confident that I've also showed them a little bit what it takes truly to create experiences and what it takes not to be afraid. So to your point, my daughter turned 18 in October. My children are five years and one one week apart. And my son turned 13. And maybe about six years ago, I had allowed them to pick their first stop. We usually spend half of the summer in, in Italy. I allowed them to pick their first stop on the way to Italy and they picked Paris. And as you probably know, when you're making multiple stops and that particular summer, I have no idea what was going on, but the flights were very, very expensive because we were making multiple stops and not returning to the same point of departure. So I closed my laptop one night and I decided, okay, open it back up and see who else might fly to Paris. And then we're going to figure this out. And Iceland Air flew to Paris. So I said, okay, let's stop over in Iceland on our way to Paris. And I jumped off the plane with my two kids. My husband stayed back to work. And we went to Iceland for two days. And they've always remembered this. So for their birthdays in October, I decided we all needed to shut it down, get off the grid completely. And so I booked a trip to Iceland to go back. But this time to go in the most remote area of Iceland to really experience what it was like to walk on a glacier, which may one day no longer be here. And we learned about that and what it meant to walk in an ice cave and see geysers and detach yourself pretty much from most forms of communication for a good part of the day, what it meant to see, stay in a hell that they didn't have a lot of lighting outside. We have an apartment in New York. They were in the city all weekend for Christmas this weekend to attend different events. I wanted them to see what it meant to really visit a place that 
they live like they did a hundred years ago because they're trying to preserve this amazing part of the earth. And so yeah. we had this really great experience because they had said, we'd like to go here, here. And I said, yes, we're, we're going to do it. Let's do it. Mm. Yes is living with this vitality and this desire to see the world and be part of it and understand people make us more human. And I think that's my, that's my greatest gift I can give my children. I love it. An incredible gift. They are so lucky to have you out there expanding their horizons, getting them out into the world, challenging them. Kimberly, the time is absolutely flying. And I want to ask you a final question sure. for the for everyone who's listening, who's out there striving, running into challenges, trying to be courageous and refill their energy tanks. What advice do you have for them? What advice would you want to leave them with about how you have managed your successful leadership journey? think that business can be tough, but every single day we have this opportunity to start over and you don't want to start over not utilizing what you learned the day before because the day before was an amazing day because we made it through 24 hours. Now we have an opportunity to absorb that especially if we got a halfway decent night's sleep and wake up to a new sunrise, a new moment, a new opportunity. That's it. And you have to just follow your dream and follow your passions. And if you do that, and it takes a lot of energy, it takes a Mm. will, it takes a lot of drive. It is, anyone thinks it's easy. They're wrong. They're so wrong. But that's what I would say. So beautiful. I could literally visualizing this. Where can people find you? Where can they have more of you? You can follow me on Instagram. My business is Kimberly.pucci. My personal, which I share with everyone, it's part of the journey, is Kimberly underscore C underscore Pucci. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook. I'm not a big tweeter, but they're trying to get me there. <laughs> And we got to buy one of your bags. Yes. (laughs) Of course, you can buy one of my bags or I I travel. I work out of New York, Newport, and now South Florida. I'm in Italy often. I'm always happy to connect. That's amazing. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. This worked out. This was perfect. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for making some time. We'll put all of that contact information in the show notes. Great. Okay. Thank you both. Have really a lovely appreciate day. it. Have a fabulous Bye. Day. one day. Bye. Oh. <laughs> Great discussion. Gosh, so many nuggets in there. I think something that really resonated with me was not just that you don't know what you don't know, but you won't mm. know mm. what you don't know, which really has a different connotation to it because it's not just about going oh yes, know that I won't know the answer, but I don't even know the topics, the planets that we'll be living on. And being ready for that feels like it's a very different mindset. Mm -hmm. One where certainly waking up every day for her last comment and absorbing (sighs) what happened and being intentional about today's focus, it's a beautiful way to think about just that day-to-day living and leadership choice that she was talking about. I'm a, you know that I always love our guests and every time I'm more amazed than the previous, this woman had incredible encounters. You know, the two things that really struck me, well, this power of yes, it's incredible. Like the moment you start your day, say, I'm going to say yes. I believe your day outlook changes because if you start saying yes, And, you know, I've been reading this in so many personal development guides. Like, yes is very powerful. Super powerful. Yes. Yes. (laughs) It makes me think of Shonda Rhimes, the year of yes. I think she had a whole year where she, everything that happened, she said yes. And she talks about how transformational it was to have 12 months of saying nothing but yes. I would do my, I would do this experiment. I'm going to do this experiment with my husband and see what happens. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and the second thing that Kimberly said that truly struck with me is this concept. She And she said it twice. She said, 
Because first she said confidence is about preparation. I'm like, huh? Like when you see someone really good on stage presenting, etc. We all forget how many hours of preparations they went into there. And then when she said at the end what you what you, you said too about the day of waking up, she said waking up every day knowing that you have learnings from the day before that you can use. And I never thought about it this way, Jeff, because even when something bad happens to us and we we came through a pandemic, now the tech layoffs, something else might happen tomorrow. The sun will always sunset and the sun will always raise again. And the only thing that we can take with us is our learning from the up moments and the down moments and use those to propel us forward. And ironically, I think the point on up moments is really striking me as well because I feel it's, it's becoming, now it's hard to do, but I think we know what can I learn from the bad moments? What can I learn? How do I look back and look? But the up moments, I tend to just propel straight through them onto the next yeah, yeah. and to also take the moment to go, oh, what can I learn? How do I make sure I have more up moments? That very rarely is something that I'm doing with much intention. So I'm totally with you. I think every single day, it's a great, it's a great mantra. I love it. Oh, thank you, everybody, for being with us, 99 Humans. One more to go and see you at the next episode. Bye, everyone. Bye.